الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلاۃ وسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء سعید المرسلین نبی ان محمد و علی علی و صحابہ من و من احتدا بی سنتی الی یوم الدین اما بعد احب تف اللہ I thought it would be beneficial for us to go through a very important text to give us insight into the path of the Salaf. Because so many people say that they follow the Salaf of Saleh and they follow the Minhaj of the Salaf. But they don't often get to study books of the Salaf. This is a very important book by Imam uh, Al-Muzani, Al-Muzani, Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya and it's called Shar Sunnah Lil Muzani. It's called the explanation of the Sunnah by Imam Al Muzani. And this book is a book which is from one of our Salaf. And when we talk about the Salaf, we're talking about the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, wa tabi'in, meaning like their students. And the Itba'a Tabi'in, their students. So the, we're talking about the first three generations. And the way we know this, because the Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرَ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يَلُونُهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يَلُونُهُمْ The best people are those people of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. So the Salaf is the first three generations of Islam. And Imam Al-Muzani, his name was... Abu Ibrahim Ismail ibn Yahya ibn Ismail ibn Amr ibn Muslim al-Muzni al-Misri Talmid al-Shafi'i. So his name, he was the father of Ibrahim Ismail, the son of Yahya, the son of Ismail, the son of Amr ibn Muslim, the son of, uh, his, his father's name was Muslim, al-Muzni. And he was born in uh, in Egypt, and that's why they refer to him as Al Misri. And he was one of the students of Imam Shafi'i, which was one of the great Imams, uh, which is known as the Fuqaha Al Arba, the four Imams of jurisprudence: Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed. Rahimahumullah jami'an. And they were the great imams uh, in fiqh and jurisprudence and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved them and they lasted uh, their fiqh, their understanding of jurisprudence lasted up until our time. Uh, Imam al-Muzani, he died the year, or he was born in the year which means 175 Hijri was when he was born. And the year he was born, one of the great Imams of Fiqh had died that year. His name was Layth ibn Sa'd, rahimahullah ta'ala. And so Imam al-Muzni, he lived during a time when there was a lot of great Imams of the Sunnah. And with that, to show also to show the importance of women in Islam and women in preserving the religion, his sister, a lot of the scholars of that day, they mention his sister, the, the sister of Imam al-Muzani, uh, as far as uh, some of the, because she used to uh, attend some of the lessons of Imam a Shafi'i, the great Imam, Imam a Shafi'i. And so they also mention uh, and narrate from her. And so this shows us also the importance of women in Islam, that they were also the carriers of ilm. And that's why we should never uh, negate that fact. And we should never fail to remember and even practice that, that, you know, as women, uh, you know, our women in our community should also, you know, learn uh, Islam, learn how to practice Islam. And for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors to really do some talib and ilm, that they can be of great benefit to their communities, to teaching other women and so on and so forth. From his uh, scholars, 
of the most important is uh, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, Imam al-Shafi'i. And he died in the year 204 Hijri. Okay, that was, now that's uh, 1,200 and uh, in approximately 37 years ago. So that was a long time ago. So that's why they're the Salaf. They're the early generations of scholars who carried the religion and protected and preserved it. Also from his great scholars was Imam Ali ibn uh, <coughs> Ma'bud ibn Shaddad al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, and Na'im ibn Hamad al-Khaza'i, and also another Imam, Isbagh ibn Nafi. So these are some of the great Imams. He had many students that be later became great imams and some of the famous ones that have famous books like I have a book here called Akida at Tahawiya and Imam Tahawi uh, he was one of his students as well Abu Jafar at Tahawi and many others many great imams of the Sunnah like uh, Abu Bakr ibn Khuzayma Imam ibn Khuzayma and others so those are uh, some of the important imams that studied with him and studied from him. Uh, Imam al-Muzni, he died in during Ramadan in the year Arba wa Sittin wa Miatain, meaning 264 Hijri. And he died in Egypt. Okay, so he's a great imam. And he was known for his love of the Sunnah and his preservation of the Shafi'i Madhab, as well as his adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Getting into the treaties, the Imam began his treaties. And, and what's important about this, this book, as well as many of these books, because this is how the great Imams, they preserved the religion. They preserved it and they focused a lot on creed. This book is called Shara Sunnah, okay, by Imam al Muzni. And the early generations, they referred to the Sunnah. For them, the Sunnah had to do with Aqidah and all of Islam. You know, for them, the Sunnah meant all of Islam. Later generations, now a lot of people say, oh, I need to, sell, I need to pray my Sunnah prayers. So a lot of times you'll see people with regards to fiqh and and other actions, they will talk about sunnah, but sunnah is restricted in, in its meaning to things like extra prayers and extra fasting. But the salaf, the early generations, when they talked about the sunnah, a lot of times it had to do with everything in Islam, and especially aqidah is creed. So it shows the difference between the early generations and the later generations on some of these terms and so forth. Imam Mazini. Muzani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he began his treatise, he said, Asamana Allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa wa wafaqana wa iyyakum li muwafaqat al huda. It's a very beautiful statement. So he said, May Allah protect us and you through taqwa and grant us the success to remain in conformity to the guidance. Meaning, here the Imam started his book and his book was a response to uh, people asking questions about Aqidah and things like this. And so he was clarifying as many of the Imams they would do, they would write in order to clarify the, 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 the creed or the belief of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And so Imam al Mazni, he was writing and when he began, he's also, as was the way of the Salaf, is when they would write and when they would give lectures and stuff, they would pray for the person who's listening or pray for the person who's reading. This is a very powerful dua. So he said, may Allah protect us and you through taqwa. So here he's praying that Allah blesses you with taqwa. And we're reading this book now 1,200 years later. And, he, and you know, he still gets adjured from that. And we're reading that and, and assisting in that. And he said, and grant us a success to remain in conformity to the guidance. May, meaning, may Allah bless us to stay on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah bless us to adhere to the Quran and the sunnah. And then he said, and to proceed. So you 
may Allah guide you in righteousness. Again, he's making dua. And that's why a lot of times we try to say, uh, you know, make dua for the people who are listening. Because that is the way of the Salaf and that is a way to get people's attention when you make dua for them. And so he said, to proceed so you, may Allah uh, give you, may Allah make you righteous, have asked me to clarify to you from the Sunnah an affair that may make yourself patient in adherence to it and avert thereby the doubtful sayings and the deviation in the newly invented affairs of the misguided ones. So here's a beautiful statement, Imam Muzni, he's not only supplicating for those people listening, you know, those people who were reading his, his treatise, but he said, and this gives us the point of why he wrote it, he said, uh, you have asked me to clarify to you from the Sunnah, an affair that may make you patient in adherence to it and avert thereby the doubtful sayings and the deviation in the newly invented affairs and misguided ones. Why is this important? Because here Imam al Musni, he is clarifying what the truth is, and that's what a da'i, someone who's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they should be clarifying things. They shouldn't cause confusion in their community. So it shows from the Salaf that they were about clarifying things, not causing confusion and fitna. Instead, they were putting out fitna. So here he's saying, you asked me to clarify the sunnah, okay? And I'm writing this to clarify the sunnah, give you basically the tools so you could distinguish between the truth and falsehood. So you don't get misguided. And this is important because now there are so many groups and you'll see when you get, you know, when you travel around the world, you'll see so many different groups. You know, you'll see people, they say, you know, we're from a group called the Quran Muslimin, join us. You know, we believe like this and we have certain beliefs. Another group, they'll say, hey, you need to go khuruj with us. You need to make bayan, get up in the masjid, even though you have no knowledge and you need to do this. Some other groups will turn off the lights and make dhikr together until spit comes out of their mouth. Other groups will, you know, tell you to do all kinds of things which are go against uh, what worship is. And so it's very important to clarify the truth and to know something about falsehood so you can stay away from it. And this is how the great Imams of the Salaf, how they were. And so he said, indeed, I, I shall explain to you a clearly distinct and enlightening minhaj methodology as sincere advice that cannot be attributed to me or you. I shall begin in the vein by praising Allah, the possessor of correct guidance, the praise is for Allah, the most deserving of remembrance, and the first of those who must be thanked. And I praise him, Al-Wahid, the one, As-Samad, the eternal, who does not have a female companion nor offspring. Lem yulid wa lem yulad. He is far exalted above having an equal. Allah has no equal, no partners. So no one resembles him. There's nothing that looks like Allah, and Allah doesn't look like anything in his creation. And no one is similar to him. Nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a samir, the all-hearing, al-basir, the all-seeing, al-alim, the all-knowing, al-khabir, the well-acquainted, he the all-aware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-aware of everything. And he is the invincible and he is the exalted. That shows us a lot of the beautiful attributes and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're gonna use for this some of the explanation of a great uh, Imam of this time, Allah yarhamahu, who died some years ago. His name was Sheikh Yahya, uh, Sheikh Yahya Najmi, rahmatullah alayhi. And he was a, a scholar here in Saudi Arabia. He died, he was in, from a place called Jizan. Alhamdulillah, I got a chance one time to see him. He came to Medina and I was able to attend the lecture. Well, alhamdulillah, right before he died, in fact. Great imam, he was very old in age. Anyhow, in his explanation, so we're just gonna touch on, get some of his explanations, especially these things that talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, because we need to know what is the creed of Ahl Sunnah, because you will see that if you, you know, come in contact with many other Muslims, many people don't even know who Allah is. They say they worship Allah, but they have weird understanding. Some people say Allah is everywhere. If you say Allah is everywhere, that means he's in the bathroom. 
That means he's in the filthy place. No, we don't say that. But you have to know what the belief of Ahlul Sunnah is because they are the carriers of the Sunnah of the Prophet They are the carries, carriers of the, they're the inheritors of the Prophets. Alayhim after Salatu Salam. They inherited from the Prophets. What did they inherit? They inherited knowledge. Ilm, ilm of the Quran, ilm of the Sunnah, knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. Because we, we don't want to be ignorant, we need to know how to practice our Islam and how to understand our Islam. So Imam uh, uh, Ahmed ibn Naj, uh, Yahya al Najmi, Ahmed al Najmi, sorry, uh, he said uh, in mentioning where uh, Imam Muzni said in the beginning of his tree, he says, Alhamdulillah, ahakku man dhukir where uh, Imam, the Imam said, all praise belongs to Allah, the one who has, who's the most rightfully deserving to be remembered. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we make dhikr to who? Who do we make dhikr or adhkar? When we make adhkar in the morning and the night? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make it to the Prophet we don't make dhikr of others, but we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's an act of ibadah. And we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, uh, the Shaykh mentioned, he said, he said that this is evidence, this statement is evidence, or is evidence by the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah says, فَذْكُرْنِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, Allah commands you to remember him, and he will remember you. And guess what? Us having this dars, you get ajr for it, bi'idnillah. If your intention is sahih. Why? Because this is a, a, a majalis al-ilm. This is a sitting and a gathering of seeking knowledge. So this is a way of remembering Allah, so Allah will remember you with the malaika. And there's an authentic hadith about that. But this ayat shows us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرْنِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, and I will remember you. And also, uh, Imam Muzni he also said, "Wa ola men shukr," and he is the most rightfully deserving to be thanked. That's Allah. Allah is the most rightful uh, and deserving to be thanked. Is to thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The evidence for that is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Wa li wa la takfurun." And remember and um, and give thanks to me. Allah is commanding us. He commands you to thank him, he commands you to remember him, and he says, Wala takfurun, and do not disbelieve. Because disbelief, and when you have kufr, this is the opposite of being thankful and grateful. Because kufr, one of the meanings is there's kufr of uh, of ungratefulness to show ungratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a type of kufr. That doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam, but it's a type of kufr. You're not acknowledging the blessings that Allah has given you. Instead, you're rejecting those blessings. The opposite of rejecting blessings is to, rem is to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be thankful by worshiping. Make sure you pray. Make sure you pray on time. Make sure you remember Him on your tongue. Make sure you read the Quran. Make sure you do all those good acts of ibadah in worship. That's how you show thank thankfulness to Allah. You show thankfulness to Allah and gratefulness to Allah by doing righteous deeds that please Him. Those are uh, acts of uh, thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Imam uh, Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullahi rahmatin wasi'ah, he mentions uh, some of the sifat, and I think we'll, we'll save that for the next uh, sitting, and we'll try to make them short, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.